Operationally, the Red Rescue will be deployed at low altitude from a high-speed platform behind enemy lines. The complete system is undetectable and works in GPS-denied environments. This prototype drop test demonstrated the Red Rescue drop from a helicopter at about 2,000 feet above ground level. The Air Force is in critical need of this capability for downed airmen. We are providing, with this Red Rescue concept, that payload delivery capability anywhere in the world. My name is Tyler Kunta, and I'm a program manager here at SpaceWorks. The SpaceWorks Red Rescue is designed in three critical components. First, we have the capsule. The capsule is designed to rapidly decelerate and stabilize mid-air from speeds up to Mach 6. We have a two-part parachute system inside, a supersonic drogue, and a main canopy that will decelerate that system mid-air from any speeds. The next component is the drone, which will separate from the Red Rescue capsule while in air. The drone is designed to fold up to fit nicely within this capsule and is designed to support 50 pounds of payload in our personnel recovery kit. This personnel recovery kit here will be delivered to the downed airmen dropped from a height of 15 feet from this drone. Inside this PRK, we have crucial supplies such as shelter, triage, water, food, and even ammo. In the high desert of New Mexico, it was a beautiful day. It was blue skies, low winds, and great conditions for a test hop. My name's Dave Hemphill. I'm the shop safety and operations manager for SpaceWorks Enterprises here in Atlanta. When released from the helicopter, a pilot chute is deployed, which extracts a drogue chute to stabilize and slow down Red Rescue. After that, a timer deploys the main parachute, which slows it down even further to the descent rate best for the deployment of the drone. We had a good opportunity to see the parachute come out and inflate perfectly and slowly release the drone. I had an opportunity to work on the avionics box, which is right here. That's the primary source of controlling the vehicle while it's in flight and prior to flight to make sure that we're getting correct telemetry and collect information to confirm that we can in fact fly. It also controlled when the drone was released once the capsule was stabilized under the parachute. All this was very important timing wise to make sure that after we were released from the helicopter, we deployed everything and hit every state that we needed to on the way down for the drone to then deploy the PRK to the target site. My name is Zachary Pitts. I'm a structures lead at SpaceWorks. My involvement with the Red Rescue program was early on uh, the chief engineer came to me and asked me to do an overall concept for a couple of the major release mechanisms in this system. One of the major challenges was packaging the drone into this large cylinder. So the arms of the drone actually fold up to make it more streamlined. Then the drone actually slides into the container in this direction and this hook secures the drone and the PRK in this system to allow the drone to fall out of the container. Once it does that, the arms spring back to the X shape that you see here, propellers spool up, and then the drone corrects itself or catches itself and then flies to the spot that it's supposed to drop the PRK. So the main thing that I worked on in this project was the personal recovery kit. This is, the, this is kind of the, the end result of what we needed to do with this project, which was to deliver a recovery kit to a downed pilot or someone else in need. The design for this went through a bunch of different phases. The, the very first phase was just trying to understand the basic shape. You know, we, we considered a bunch of different ideas, but we ended up having a really great idea to have it match the outside of the capsule itself in order to make it a better shape. One of the most important things on this system is to save mass because in aerospace, mass is everything. In order to reinforce the PRK watt without adding a bunch of unnecessary mass, we decided to reinforce it along all of the edges in order to save mass without adding any material in unnecessary places. Throughout this whole project, one of the key constraints, one of the key difficulties we had to overcome was simply fitting it all into the space. You know, it's a, there definitely are air gaps, but there are plenty of places where we were fighting for a quarter inch here and there just to have enough room for something. Within the PRK are items that a downed pilot or airman might need to survive until we can send a team to pick them up. 
When we designed the PRK, we designed three different scenarios. One scenario was for the tundra, one scenario was for the desert, and one scenario was for the rainforest. For example, we can pack survival blankets that not only act as a blanket, but act as an aid for them to collect water. For example, if they were in the desert. It also acts as shelter for the rainforest. The contents of the kit can be customized to whatever the environment or the scenario may dictate. No matter how much you plan for, there's always something that's got to be um, overcome or you know figured out at the at the last second. When we got to the drop site and we're ready to load up the Red Rescue onto the helicopter. We had some fairly small nylon lines that actually supported the vehicle to keep it from spinning and rotating. And those lines were relatively thin. And when we went to attach them to the hook, which is made to accommodate very large steel rings, we noticed there was a very small gap at the end of the hook, which would have allowed, especially when the helicopter was flying forward, if the hook had rotated, our small lines could have slipped out the back of the hook. So we had to come up with some way at the very last minute to secure the lines so that they couldn't slip off the back of the hook. So we pulled out some cords with some knot tying and some kind of leash lanyard approach. We were able to keep the lines secured on the hook and still let them be able to deploy when the hook was actuated. It's always fun to actually test something that you've been looking at on a computer screen for a long time. So one of the most rewarding parts of it, being an engineer actually is being able to take something that you've thought about, sketched, drawn in CAD, and eventually had manufactured, hold it in your hand and see it do its thing. I found a rock shaped like a slice of pizza. At Spaceworks, we can go rapidly from design iteration all the way through test. And this Red Rescue concept is a great demonstration of that. In only 16 months, we went from concept exploration phase, which involved looking at 50 different trade spaces of concepts, including gliders, including space delivery, including rocket launched cargo delivery. And we ended up with this concept for our PRK delivery device. We have experience with payload delivery devices to deliver payloads from low Earth orbit anywhere in the world. And we have years of experience with hypersonic vehicles and rapid deceleration platforms. 